family tomorrow night. Well, guys, we love you, Janella, but it's time to head back to the big gym where you guys have a special guest waiting for you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See you next Thanks, week. Janella. Bye. Bye. Coming up... That's not me. Um, yeah, that, that guy died, I think. Life after loser. Well, right now, I'm in love. Ah, oh, so, that's uh, nice. And I think I've got, a, I've got... I understand love with a whole new definition. It has a completely different meaning for me now. And later, in the Masterclass Challenge... The contestants take fat out of the packed lunch. Mm. Like a healthy version? All right, how are you going to make a Caesar salad healthy? Like this, I want to know. Well, Shannon and I have seen some amazing transformations in our time on Biggest Loser. We've seen some contestants lose up to 50%, even more, of their body weight. And what comes with that is the huge transformation, not just physically, but mentally, and how they live their life. More confidence, they're more positive, and with that, their lifestyle really changes to a future that they never thought possible. Our special guest today is a past contestant who's managed to combine all three transformations, his body, his mind, and his lifestyle. And along the way, he's also managed to find love. His name? Sean Holbrook. Hello, guys. How are you going? Mwah. Have a seat. Thanks. Well, Sean, it's great to see you. Yeah, good to see you too, though. Before we go any further, I think we should take a little step back. Yeah. And just remember the man that you were when you walked into Biggest Loser on day one. Take a look behind you. Ooh, he's a big fella, isn't he? Now, Sean, when you see that, what does that make you think? I have no idea who that is. Wow. <laughs> That's not me. Um, yeah, that, that guy died, I think. When you walked in to Camp Biggest Loser at that weight, I'm 45 years of age. I've recently found out that I have diabetes. I've got an older brother who passed away about five years ago. He was overweight and unfit. He had diabetes. He didn't make it to being over 40, which is ridiculous. And you were a very severe type 2 diabetes, weren't you? So severe that um, initially they couldn't even get any readings until they um, medicated me and put me on insulin and all that kind of stuff. They, they actually wouldn't read on the uh, AccuCheck. So. It was pretty bad. <laughs> and so I couldn't sleep for more, like the maximum sleep I ever got was an hour. So because you wake up, your mouth's dry, You've got to go to the toilet, you know, all that kind of thing. And so you're constantly tired. And I would fall asleep in the middle of a conversation. I'd fall asleep on the telephone. Yeah. I'd fall asleep with the lights or just fall asleep. And so then you came on the show and lost the weight yeah. and an extraordinary amount of weight. And then you went back to the same doctor. That's right. Tell me what he said. He'd gotten the results back from a particular test which showed how much damage had been caused by having excessively high sugar. And there was literally no trace that there'd ever been diabetes. He couldn't believe it. It was completely gone. And he, uh, he stood up out of his chair and he had tears in his eyes and he shook my hand. And, and I'm like, you know, you've, he said, you did it, you did it. And I said, yeah, but you told me, I, <laughs> you told me I could do it, you know. And he said, yeah, but I've never met anyone that actually did. So a doctor, in theory, knows that if you lose the weight and you change your lifestyle, you can actually get rid of diabetes, but he'd never actually seen anyone do it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that story is... That resonates with me and has done ever since we had that conversation. I've never forgotten it. Yeah, he was... Um, uh, he was just completely amazed. I think the story of your type 2 diabetes 
inspired a lot of people because there's a lot of people out there with type 2 diabetes and when they saw that you were actually able to get rid of it through the changes of your lifestyle, your nutrition and, and exercise, I think that had everybody sit up and take notice. Yeah. You know, interestingly, you were eliminated relative, not early, but it wasn't, certainly wasn't anywhere near the end. That's right. And no. you managed to go home and just ramp it up at home. I don't know if I ever believed that I could do it or, you know, that I could achieve what I wanted to, to, to achieve, but um, you guys know what it's like. You take one step at a time. It's baby steps. You know what I mean? The next foot follows. You know, you just do, do the best that you can and have faith in yourself. I mean, part of the journey is finding out, is, you know, sort of like uncovering those issues which led you to being so big in the first place, they're still there or, they're, or they've already been handled, right? But those issues really are what have to be confronted, aren't they? Once you start on this journey, it never stops. And since then, I've had another look, you know, I've, I've continued to look at myself and question some of my attitudes and question, I mean, it's an attitude to sit at a table and disregard everything and just stuff food into your mouth willy-nilly. You're never really satisfied, never really full. There's two really important things that I took home in relation to weight loss. Shannon made it clear to me when he said at least 70% of weight loss is nutrition. You are what you eat, what you put in your mouth or don't put in your mouth. There are consequences, right? Isn't there? And the second most important thing is vanity. <laughs> yeah? You know, vanity's usually looked upon as being a negative and a bad thing because it's portrayed as selfishness or what a person thinking only of themselves, but it's important. It's about self-respect. It is about self-respect. And it's about... And wanting to be the best version of yourself. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Absolutely. It wasn't until the night of finale... <laughs> ...that I actually felt that I had achieved something. And I went, my God, I've done it. And I went, who's that? Is that Brad Pitt? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, man, I look like a rock star. And I felt like one. That's amazing. So what's life like now at 92 kilos, fit, strong, active? Well, right now I'm in love. Ah. Oh. So... Oh, well, that's uh, nice. And I think I've got... A, I've got... I understand love with a whole new definition. It has a completely different meaning for me now. I guess that's because uh, you love yourself first. Yeah, I think it's part of it. A big part of it. I don't think it... I think it's difficult to be able to love somebody properly and fairly unless you can love yourself first. I think that's important. Very true. I've got a question. Um, when you were in Camp Biggest Loser, did you ever get a bit scared about going home or did you ever freak out about what could be waiting for you when you got home? You're not the same person. You won't be the same person. That you can guarantee. So be prepared for that. Be prepared to find out who you are. So when you get out there, there's going to be a huge bunch of differences. And with that, you need to remain focused, focused on losing weight, right? Looking after yourself. That's the most important thing. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you back. And, you know, you're a testament to someone who's been able to get out there and achieve it. And I know you're having a great life now, so I I'm, I'm, couldn't be happier for you, Sean. Thank you, Michelle. Congratulations, Thanks mate. for having me, Mark. Thanks for coming in. And you've done amazing. Thanks, guys. See you all again. Good luck, Ed. Well, I definitely got something from that. And I really hope that you drew some inspiration and some motivation. Now, I know Sean mentioned something about nutrition being about 70 to 80% of weight loss. So we're going to head back to the kitchen for our masterclass challenge, which hinges on just that, nutrition. I need you to get changed, and let's go. Up next, the Masterclass Challenge. You've got one hour. 
and you're cooking for 20 very hungry people. So get cracking. But are cracks appearing in the Caesar salad? What have you done? They came back to me and they were like, ruined. I don't know what, I don't know how he went wrong. What foods help maintain steady glucose levels? Keep watching. The answer is coming up after the break. The answer is C. Low GI foods, such as whole grain breads, are more slowly digested, meaning glucose levels rise steadily. Ooh. We walked into the kitchen and we saw Shannon, Haley, and Michelle all waiting for us at the end. It looked like the benches were set up. It's time for a kitchen challenge at Masterclass. Hi, everyone. Hi. Welcome back to the Masterclass Kitchen. Normally, we're here for Janella, but now we're here for a challenge. Once you leave Camp Biggest Loser, you're going to find yourselves back in the workforce and you're going to face potential disaster 240 times a year. Lunch. What I used to eat for lunch was probably more than what you know, most people would have in a whole day. I bet it was often the most unhealthy meal of the day. Looking back at the lunches I used to eat, I'm pretty horrified. I would be eating close to two days' worth of food in one sitting. Well, we want your routine to be a healthy one, week after week, year after year. So in today's challenge, you're going to have to prepare several healthy and tasty meals that you'll happily take to lunch. Now to start this challenge, I'm going to split you into pairs. Caitlin, you can be with David. Yeah. <laughs> Rick and Lisa, you two are together. And that leaves Shannon and Phoebe. And next, I'm giving you different lunch options. <laughs> Caitlin and David, you are on sandwich duty. Rick and Lisa, you're rustling up some wraps. That's good. good. And Shannon and Phoebe, you're on salads. Before coming to Biggest Loser, I was an avid eater of salads, but mine come a little bit different. They were between a bun and a patty. You know, there's often lettuce, pickle, onion in a burger. So that's pretty much a salad. And here's how the challenge will work. Each pair has to prepare their lunch option from the healthy ingredients on this table. And you're not just making lunch for yourselves. You're making lunch for 20. <laughs> of course we are. <laughs> One hour from now, a circuit class of 20 people will be finishing up at the local gym. And when these gym junkies are done with their workout, they'll be eager to refuel. And your lunches will be on the menu. And when they've all finished eating, we're going to ask them to vote on which lunch option they like best. In deciding their votes, they're going to consider calories, nutritional value, presentation and flavour, the whole package. If your lunch tops the poll, then the illustrious Masterclass Shield will be yours. When I leave Camp Boogus Loser, I want to take the Masterclass Shield with me. I want my name on that thing as many times as I can. I've got it three times and I want it fourth. Rick is up there three times. I'm not there once. I need to be on the Masterclass Shield. So, what are you waiting for? Get to it. The first thing I thought of when Hayley said we were at salads was a Caesar salad. Fat-free mayo? I definitely need the mayo if we're going to do a Caesar. I think doing the Caesar salad, it was a little bit of a risk, but if we could turn it into a really low-calorie option, people would be like, whoa, I can have Caesar salad without it, you know, totally blowing my calorie limit. Ready? That's it. Let's cook. Let's cook. We got wraps, which was great, because I know Rick eats wraps quite regularly, so that was a good option. Me and Lisa decided to split the job, you know, 10 wraps each. She was going to do 10 vegetarian wraps and I was going to do 10 chicken and salad wraps. Yep, a little All bit right. of salt maybe, for that will do it. For this challenge, I got teamed up with Caitlin, which for me 
was a good choice. I was happy with my choice. You know, I thought we could give this a really good shape. So what have you guys got? Well, I think we're going to do a beef and salad type option and a ham and salad type option. So I think with a ham, we can go with some seeded mustard on there and give it a bit of extra zing. Yeah. And with the roast beef, I think we're going to use some tomato salsa in there to give that a bit of zing as well, because it's very low in calories. And these are, these are sandwich options? Sandwich options. The ingredients that Caitlin and I selected, firstly were the meats, I mean, it was really easy for us with the ham and the beef. Uh, we made sure that they were low fat options. When we selected the bread for our sandwiches, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Bergen weight management bread. Um, I think it's my favourite bread in the house and I knew that that would go fantastic with the, the beef and, and the salsas. We also had to get our condiments right with our mustard and, and salsa and then it was it's down to the salad and you know common sort of salad ingredients. We had a bit of onion and we thought we'd had everything pretty much covered. Let's do it. Guys, this is just a reminder, you've got one hour and you're cooking for 20 very hungry people. So get cracking. The main idea for the salad was going to be a healthy version of a Caesar salad. You know, in the real world, at a restaurant, the Caesar salad is notorious for being five, six, even 700 calories. And although it's a salad, it's not a healthy option. So the fact that we're providing a healthy option is definitely going to turn some heads. Shannon and I. We did a little bit of parmesan cheese, so 10 grams of parmesan cheese. We made a low-fat mayo dressing. Took the skin off the chicken breast, pan fried it. We used Bergen soylent bread and cut it up into little cubes, a little spray of olive oil into the oven for baked croutons. And everyone loves croutons. They look great. That is very clever, you're making your own homemade croutons. Mm. Lots of little simple things that made it really healthy. So you've got this out for your chicken? Mm-hmm. All right, so we're steaming chicken. I was pretty nervous of making my, my chicken avocado wraps. Lisa told me to steam the chicken. Uh, I'd never steamed chicken before, so I didn't know what to do. You know, I didn't know how, to, how much water to put in. I didn't have an idea, a clue at all. I'm a bit of a fan of steamed chicken because it keeps it really moist. Is that the reason why you're doing that, Rick? I don't know. <laughs> I normally uh, just George Foreman everything, so... George Foreman. For the grilled vegetable wrap, I char-grilled the capsicum so that I could take all the skin off and that just makes it nice and sweet. And then I just used the frying pan with a very light spray on to do my pumpkin, zucchini, eggplant. And then I just did up the ricotta with some chopped basil and just wrapped them up. It was quite easy. What do you reckon? Good? Yeah? Mish? Beautiful, mate. They look great. So that's what you do with the chicken ones. Just fill them, roll them. So don't make them too big because, like, Special. they're tasty. Special egg. Since coming to camp Biggest Loser, I've discovered the wonderful world of salsa. Um, it's, it's, you get to eat a lot of it for not a lot of calories, and I, I pretty much would eat salsa on everything. Um, I don't have it on my oats in the, in the, for breakfast, but I pretty much have it on everything else. It's a secret ingredient, mate, is it? Secret ingredient, mate. Personally, I wouldn't eat a roast beef and salsa sandwich. Um, just the thought of it is a bit odd. All right, Caitlin, so you're using a spread on the sandwiches. I notice it's a proactive spread, so what's the benefit to that? It lowers your cholesterol absorption. Nice. All right, how are you going to make a Caesar salad healthy? Like this, I want to know. We do, we'll use, for the dressing, we use low-fat mayonnaise yep. and lemon juice. Yeah, good. We've got our chicken breast, which yep. obviously, no fat, will take the skin off. Yeah. We can slice that pretty finely to put into the salad. A little bit of parmesan, that's not Eggs. too many calories. We'll take, we'll use a yeah. whole boiled egg and, and take, take the, the yolks out. out. All right. So we have, like, the second one, that was the second option. We're going to do a tuna and chickpea salad, so All there's right. a bit of carb in there. Phoebe came up with a great idea to do a tuna and chickpea salad because it was going to give the guys back everything they'd just lost in their workout. Do you want nice and thin? Do you, want to, do you want to do thin strips of snow peas? And I'll do the shallots. I got a little bit nervous at Shannon, you know, because I'm a bit of a control freak when I was like, I can't trust you to cut the shallots the way I want them to. I'll do the shallots. I don't know if I trust you enough with the shallots. <laughs> So I left him in charge of the eggs, so I was like, everyone can boil eggs, everyone can peel boiled eggs. Not Shannon. I have never boiled an egg in my life. It's something that you think is very easy to do, but, I mean, you just put an egg in water and you boil it. 
but I didn't know how long to boil it for. I didn't know if it was supposed to be cold or warm. You know, who knows? Who cares? What have you Let's done? move on. What Let's move on. What's what have you done? <laughs> That's so crazy. They came back to me and they were like, 